Well, here we are after around 2 months wait, 100 days an expert. Now before we begin, let me just say, I don't really play an expert very often, so I wasn't entirely sure on what to expect. I did get pretty far into the world, but I'm still not done, so if you want me to continue to 200 days, leave a like and subscribe, I'd appreciate that. Alright, enjoy the video. This time, the world will be a purple corruption. It's just called the corruption, unlike last time where it was crimson. Also, as a reminder, every 4.30am is a new day. It's what it says on the Terraria wiki, as well as when nighttime events end. So with that in mind, let's start to day 1. Day 1 was really eventful. I started out by cutting trees, like always, and made a legendary wooden sword, bow, and wooden armor. Then I explored the spawn area a bit. I saw a gnome run at me and then it just died. And then I did a bit of mining and found two hard crystals pretty early on. Back at the spawn I built a little shack area again to keep me and the guide protected since monsters in expert mode are a lot more relentless. I was testing if zombies can open doors, which they can't, and then I've tested if they can go through platforms, which was a dumb idea because I knew they could. So they just flooded our base, but I dealt with them. The bow came in really handy. While exploring, I found a giant living tree, which is ironic when it's so close since I wasn't gonna build a treehouse in this series. Instead, I'm gonna do something a bit more different. From the living tree, I got a bird minion. I'm not used to being able to get a minion so early on, and I actually managed to make a watch on day one, so we're already off to a better start. I also expanded the new shack, so hopefully NPCs move in earlier. On day 2, I explored the left side of my world and found a desert, and a desert cave. Of course, I'm not gonna stick here for too long. Even in my previous world, I wasn't a big fan of the underground desert areas. The merchant moved in while I was exploring a cave, so I went back home and got the piggy bank. I also upgraded my sword to a cactus sword and made an iron chest plate. I head to the corruption to get some stronger weapons. I also began working on the elevators using the bombs. After blowing myself up like 4 times, I found an underground mushroom biome, and a salamander came in and spat on me. I always hated how those things look, so creepy. I came back and found running shoes. This world is already much nicer than the previous one, but I probably won't be saying that once hard mode starts. While mining tungsten, I tried running away from a TNT I threw, but I couldn't really make it out in time. Well, at least I was home so I could upgrade my pickaxe. On day 3, I continued mining. I was having a lot of fun exploring the underground. With my running boots and my umbrella, I explored the left side of the world and this time I reached the jungle. And I actually found a legendary sword, it was just sitting there. I also got a suspicious eye, and feeling confident with my new sword, I was ready to try and fail at killing it. So I made a very quick arena and got to fighting the Eye of Cthulhu. I was using the nurse to heal myself and then running back to the arena, but still, I lost to the eye. And before I tried again, I didn't want to complete my iron armor, so I went back mining. And then a fairy came to guide me to a chest out of nowhere, it was nice. I spent the rest of day 3 mining. On day 4, I found another suspicious eye, so I would retry the fight at night. I completed my iron armor set and I also bought a red cape. I explored the right side of my world and then died to an eater of souls. I did get pretty far though. Having running shoes so early on is so useful. This time I killed the Eye of Cthulhu and got the shield. On day 5 I started removing the platforms to make room for an actual main base, but I decided to go explore into the jungle while NPCs still moved in. I completely forgot I could swing the umbrella and I'm probably gonna keep forgetting. While exploring the jungle, I found the jungle temple, I also found an anklet, one of the items I will later need to upgrade my boots. I was getting way too lucky and it felt like the world was trying to lower my guard. A hornet dropped combat leggings and then a giant shelly knocked me off my rope. But thankfully, I landed on a pool of water. While looting, I found two gravitation potions, so I'll probably use them once I head home. I head back home after reaching lava pools and then killed the Eye of Cthulhu to upgrade my pickaxe since it was still nighttime. On day 6, I made a grappling hook, which I had been trying to use without having one, and then got to looking for floating islands. On the first island I found, I got wings. On my second island I found, right next to the other one, I got wings. Again. 
On my third island, I got more wings. On the left side of my world, the fourth island actually had a balloon. And the fifth island had more wings. Great. Once my potion ran out, I landed in the jungle and continued exploring past it. I found an anglet. I was surprised to see one this early on, since I usually never find them. At the end of my world, in the ocean, there was a cave. I wanted to see how far it down it goes, but it actually kind of scares me. So I just head back home. Back home, I blew up the shack, as well as myself. And then I proceeded to remove what was left. While I was removing the walls, slime began raining from the sky. After killing enough slimes, the man himself showed up. I refused to let him defeat me again. Once I defeated him, I got rid of the last defenseless slimes, who now couldn't damage me. And then I got to terrorizing my NPCs. I also made some molotovs and got to fighting the Eater of Worlds. The Eater of Worlds is a big worm that splits off if you don't destroy the top of it first. But you shouldn't really focus on the head, since the body will always be getting in the way anyways. From the Eater of Worlds, I got the Worm Scarf, a scarf that reduces all damage taken by 17%. Using the scales it dropped, I made a full set of Shadow Armor. In the background, I saw a meteor land. I thought it was part of the background, but then it actually landed. I don't know if I saw this the last 100 days. I spent all of day 8 gathering resources and working on the main base. On day 9, I got to looking for the meteor, but I couldn't actually find it. While I was looking for it though, I found the dungeon. A lot of the dungeon was actually exposed. Now I know the water bolt can't spawn in the entrance anymore, but I'm still taking everything there with me. I actually couldn't find where the meteor landed, and I didn't really look for it for too long since I wanted to get back to working on my base. On day 10, I was still working on the main base. I wanted to try and make it something completely different from the treehouse. While working on the base, I bought a pylon. I actually wanted to try and place NPCs somewhere where they would be happy. Afterwards, I went cave exploring using the enchanted sword's beam for light. While exploring, I found a heart statue, which is very useful to have in arena since it summons hearts. It's basically free health. I was very unlucky to not find any in my last world, but this time I found one in day 10. I also found a bunch of heart crystals. By day 11, my health was already up to 240. On day 11, I actually made it down to hell. I realized I should probably be looking for the meteor, but once I head home, I was distracted and got back to working on the base. Well into day 12. After spending half the day on the base, I assumed the meteor would be down in some sort of cave, since it wasn't anywhere above ground, and my first guess was actually right. Looking back at the footage, I think I accidentally paused the last of day 12 through day 15. So instead of just telling you what happened, enjoy this recreation I made. While mining meteorite, I was interrupted early day 13 by goblins. I actually dealt with them pretty easily. And for the rest of the day, I just gathered resources and continued working on the castle. On day 14, I was still working on the castle and the traveling merchant arrived. So I got a flamingo. I wanted to do some mining and get my health higher before I fight Skeletron, so down the elevator I went. While mining, I found the Goblin Tinkerer and bought the table and boots in case he walked into lava or something. Well, I said that as a joke, but he did end up getting pushed into the lava. On day 15, I used all the heart crystals I got while mining and upgraded my running boots to rocket running boots, and then to running rocket right and from specter boots into lightning boots. I head to the dungeon since there was actually something I needed to get inside. I also built a massive arena since I have a lot of movement. And since it was raining slime, King Slime actually decided to join in on the fight.
I had to leave with 3 health because too many slimes were getting in the way. On day 16, slime stopped raining from the sky, and while I was making my way to the jungle, the demolitionist moved in. While in the jungle, I got all the health crystals I needed to get my health up to 400, and also found the beehive, and then accidentally summoned the queen bee. Whoops. Well, since I was back in the castle, I continued to work on it. On day 17, I blew up the castle grounds, and then I head down to the caves to make some homes. I was building some homes for the NPCs that preferred the underground, but I didn't really know what I could build. I wasn't really happy with any of my designs, so I kept blowing them up. And then I just did something quick, so this will just be good for now. Back at the castle, I began placing water. Then I realized I was probably rushing too much for the amount of stuff I wanted to do. So I decided to slow things down a bit, and I just organized for all of day 18. I had to organize all the way till day 19, where I got to clean up the castle grounds. I also started work on the other side of the castle, and was also preparing to make an area to place all my plants in. I was gonna need clay for the pots, so I blew some up using dynamite. At night, a blood moon occurred, but I was building so I didn't really pay attention to it. I also blew up more of the castle grounds. My plan was to focus on the castle and later build on individual houses for NPCs to get their pylons. On day 20, I did some more blowing stuff up. I have an idea of what I want to do, but I don't know how it's gonna turn out. Day 20 was completely spent working on the ground. I also went and mined obsidian, mostly with bombs. On day 21, I realized you can make armor with obsidian. I also began placing lava instead, because that's what I decided to do with the ground. And so I did for a bit, but it was a very slow process. And I had spent enough time in the castle, so it was time to go do something else. So I got to mining hellstone. I had completely forgotten I had the ability to mine it. While mining, I almost died, so I went back home to heal up. I took this opportunity to upgrade my sword, my pickaxe, and my chestplate, just to have an easier time when I did go back mining, which I did right away. The feral claws quickly became one of my favorite equipables, not having to spam the mouse anymore when swinging. At least until I reach hard mode, where most swords become auto swing. After mining for a while, I got back to the castle and completed the armor set, and upgraded my minion as well as my bow. Upgrading everything was probably a bit overdue. On day 22, I explored the jungle and then blew up part of the beehive. At night, I head to the dungeon and fought Skeletron again. I was running late, so I was worried he was gonna despawn, but I did manage to defeat him. Now I could finally get what I was looking for. On day 23, I looted the dungeon, rescued the mechanic, and picked up some bewitching tables and left. I got mostly everything I needed. Afterwards, I did something I don't usually do since it haunts me, but I decided it would be fine. I head to another world to farm vertebrates. I needed them for a mask I wanted, and since they didn't provide any advantages, I thought it would be fine. I thought there was no way of getting vertebrates in a purple world corruption, but I was very wrong, so this decision didn't really matter anyways. Back at the castle, I activated a heart statue, something I couldn't do in the last world since I couldn't find any heart statues. I spent the rest of the day working on the castle. I wanted to have most of it finished before I entered hard mode since I knew I wasn't going to be able to build in peace for a while. On day 24, I realized that part of the castle was uneven so I fixed it. At night, I head to the snow biome and began working on a house for NPCs that are much happier in this biome and get their pylon. The good thing is that it's right next to the dungeon so it would be easier to access it. I worked on the snow house all the way until day 25. I decided to use normal wood while working on this house since I was using boreal wood for mine. But something seemed too simple about it. The house went through a lot of changes, but at the end I was a bit more happier with it. I might change things up later if I have to. Once the NPCs moved in, I reforged my great fire sword. And while I was here, I decided to mine to see if I can fight the ice skates to upgrade my boots. And also get money to buy a pylon. 
At first I was using ice torches, but I don't really like the light they give off, so uh, I went back to using the normal ones. On day 26, I didn't really find much, and then the traveling merchant arrived and it distracted me. The merchant didn't have anything good, but I did buy a pylon. Now I can go from one place to the other with the power of NPC happiness. At night, I head to the jungle to build homes for NPCs there as well. I wanted to change things up from the last one I built, but still keep it in the jungle theme. Once the NPCs moved in, I got the jungle pylon. I'm still going to add to this area, but for now, I moved on to the beach. To make a house for the NPCs that enjoy the beach, and the angler, I guess. I built a nice beach house that fits two people. And because he's dumb and mean, I built an ugly poopy shack for the angler. I did end up making it slightly bigger because I'm a nice person. At night, a blood moon started, and the lava de castle looked really cool. While placing lava, I realized there's no way I'm doing all this placing. And there's an item that I knew about that could help. The bottomless lava bucket is an item you can fish when you fish in hell. While at the ocean to buy the net, I realized I had a gills potion to breathe in water, so down the cave I went. There wasn't too much except for two water chests. In a way, I was happy there was nothing down there. The traveling merchant arrived, and he had the sitting duck fishing rod. Probably the best fishing rod in the game as far as I know. There's been worlds where I'm waiting forever and he never actually sells it, so it's really convenient that he has it right now. Once I arrived in hell, I got to opening shadow chests before working on an arena. While opening chests, I got a lot of gold from pots and also a lot of loot. In an area with three chests, I found a cute baby imp. Just look at her. She looks like a little purple rat. I decided to name her Jasmine. And I also found a baby mimic. That one actually surprised me. While exploring, I reached the end of the right side of my world, so I just left. I got to rebuilding the underground's homes. I wasn't a big fan of the ones I built before. And I think these ones look much nicer. On day 31, I blew up the old homes I made. While well, the NPCs were still there. And then I added a few last details to the new ones. Down in hell, I got the guide Buru doll, and then got to building an arena. I caught a few critters to use as bait and got the demon scythe, and then I continued working on the arena. I also bought the cavern pylon. While fishing, I got an obsidian crate, which had a lava charm, which is useful because that's one of the items I needed for upgrading my running boots. Fishing in hell was really slow and really annoying, since there were so many enemies. Back in the snow biome, I got to looking for ice gates, but I couldn't find them, so I'll return later. I also did a bit of working on the base, but wasn't too happy with anything I was doing. I got back to fishing on day 33. From obsidian crates, I got another lava charm, and some other stuff like bait and potions. While continuing to fish on day 34, I got a really cool lava shark. It let me swim in lava, and apparently any other liquid too. I also got a lava bolt that bounces from one enemy to another. Another important thing I got was the lava absorbent sponge. Pretty much as rare as the lava bucket, but as you can guess, it does the opposite. I had fished so much stuff, I returned home to put everything away before I got back to fishing. Right before day 35, I got the bucket I needed. It really took long enough. Though I was happy with the decision I made because placing lava would have taken a lot longer. And only a few hours into day 35, I was already done placing lava. I also got rid of the nature part of the castle. It really wasn't going to work was what I was trying to do. I continued working on the castle till day 36. Early day 36, I got to placing walls. I wish there was an easier way to mass place walls, but the smart cursor works pretty well too. I also got rid of the area that split both lava pools, since I decided to focus on the top of the castle instead. At night, I went to the dungeon to get the alchemy station because I had forgotten about it. On day 37, I bought a lot of dynamite. Because of how fast the shark moves in lava, I decided to see if I could build the lava tunnel using TNT. I also realized I could fly for as long as I wanted using the lava shark and the infinite lava bucket. I was having a lot of fun with the shark and the infinite lava, but I was probably also making a mess. 
I then proceeded to commit not living. I needed the gravestones, don't worry about them for now. On day 38, I decided I had messed around enough and proceeded to go and try and kill the wall of flesh. On the first try, I was not prepared to, but I did run out of room. And if at first you don't succeed, try again. But before that, I made the knight's edge and a void bag for storage. I also made more molotovs. On day 39, I expanded the arena and looked for another voodoo doll. I couldn't find one, so I built a quick house for the guide. If you can kill the guide in hell with lava, he's gonna spawn the wall of flesh anyways. And after I built the house, I saw a demon with a voodoo doll. And then another one. And then a third one. On my third try, I did way better, but I got stuck and got squished. On day 40, I was really struggling with the wall. For some reason, it was a really huge difficulty spike for me. And then I died when it had 8 HP left. On day 41, I was still trying, and then I killed it really easily. I don't know why I was overcomplicating things. The wall of flesh dropped the demon heart. A usable that permanently increases accessory slots by one. As long as the world is in expert mode. I also got the mask, which I really like. And while I had so many buffs going, I did a bit of farming too. And then I got to cleaning the lava mess I made. While at the base, I realized I couldn't use my jungle pylon. It turned out the jungle had gotten corrupted. Well, back at the castle, I made an artificial graveyard and then I got crimson corruption seeds. It turns out you can have both form of corruption in your world now. On day 42, I was at the castle and I didn't really like the design, so I was going to completely revamp it. And if I didn't like the end result, I decided I would just move. I then turned the castle into a crimson castle. And then the castle was overrun by crimson monsters. I probably should have seen this coming. And then I neutralized them with sunflowers, so crisis avoided, I guess. I then spent the rest of day 42 fishing in the lava pool. On day 43, I needed new houses in the jungle, so I went to focus on that. I also skipped Queen Bee, so I should probably go look for her. While I was building the bases, a shooting star came down on a turtle and it dropped its shell. I'm not sure what the chances of that happening are. On my way to the ocean, I smashed three demon altars because I had completely forgotten to do so. I wanted to try out my lava shark in the ocean and it was pretty fast. On day 44, I destroyed the mountains near the castle and cleaned up the lava mess I made some days ago. I was building something in the hollow when I got a boss warning. I didn't remember which boss it was, but I was not ready. I did my best, but I wasn't doing enough damage and fled. And now, day 45. I took a break from the game and then I returned some time later. I was debating to myself whether to delete the world and start over, but then chose to just salvage whatever I could and continue the world. This happened because I wasn't really too happy with my progress. The first thing I did was remove the crimson from the castle since it was making my pylon not work. And then I went to begin a new base in an oasis, a magical hollow oasis. On day 46, pirates arrived and then left. Um, 
It's fine, I was focused on the base, and no, it wasn't gonna be different types of wood, I was just sketching out the general idea, with whatever I had in my inventory at the time. I also placed pink candles, to help reduce enemy spawn, and now, I just had to go and mine the blocks I needed for the base. A unicorn dropped the blessed apple, so now I have my own unicorn. Doing what I do best, I blew up a bunch of pearl stone. I also found a buried pyramid. Did I, did I say that right? Buried pyramid? But nothing too important was inside of it. I spent the rest of the day collecting sand to create pearl stone bricks. I spent all of day 47 changing the base from a bunch of different wood types into the new pearl brick. The problem is that the base was a little uneven so I had to fix that. Late at night it began raining and then I was attacked by an Alaskan pole worm. Anyways, after I defeated a cloud and another pole worm, I continued building. On day 48, I was dealing with a thunderstorm, and now there was a shark invasion in my house. I was keeping them trapped and messing around with them. And then here comes the Alaskan bullworm, oh no! And then, I finally died to something you wouldn't imagine. Another worm. Dealing with enemies was becoming a bit of an issue, and the storm really wasn't helping. So I began placing walls I planned on removing, just so some NPCs could move in and help reduce enemy mob spawn. After dying to pirates many a time, I realized I never upgraded my gear to hard mode gear, so I began work on a new elevator. After seeing a pirate jump to its desk, I went into the elevator and found the wizard. On day 49, I got to mining palladium and collecting blink root so I could make spelunker potions. Also collected crystal shards because I know they're useful but I didn't really remember why. And then I just kinda stood there, and saw all of them jump to their death in the lava pit. I defeated all the pirates without any issue. And then I got to mining. I also made some quick base changes. I might change some stuff around later. Maybe make it all out of marble like the marble arena, but probably not. But for now, I got back to mining. While mining, I killed some mimics, and while looking for spiders to kill, I found a hairstylist. I also realized I was carrying 90 gold, which the mimics dropped. After heading back to the base and upgrading my pickaxe, I got back to mining. On day 51, while I was mining titanium, a goblin army showed up. The world just doesn't want to let me mine in peace. And then at home, I got annoyed by a magic goblin. After a lot of mining, I made a titanium forge and then made titanium armor. Since I don't really need the titanium for any other reason, but it is expert mode and I will need all the help I can get. On day 52, I managed to defeat the annoying goblin lady and got her magic shadow flame knife. After the goblin army was defeated, I had some peace. I began working on the house and placing pearl stone wall, just so I can get NPCs to move in and get a pylon. I'll make it look nicer later, since it is very ugly and plain by itself. Later that day, the goblin army found my base, but I managed to defeat them easily with the shadow flame knife. I spent the rest of the day working on the base. I could also use hollow torches for the luck it provides, but I don't really like the pink color it gives. I'm very used to the normal torches, so it feels very unnatural. On day 53, after not really organizing, I worked a bit on the base and then decided I had built enough. It was time to mine titanium and upgrade everything, and hopefully get into fights of the mechanical type. I spent the rest of day 53 mining. I was mining and collecting lead, titanium, I also managed to collect a few heart crystals. Apparently while mining, I was blessed with palladium and a meteor landed, so I'm pretty sure a meteor ended up breaking one of the demon altars. Which makes me wonder if that can happen before hard mode. I mined most of day 54, but didn't find anything too interesting or worth mentioning. Only a few titanium. I returned home and began flattening everything around the house. Since I didn't have a proper arena built in this new area. I also upgraded my armor to titanium armor. A full set so people wouldn't get mad at me for not using bonuses. Afterwards, I drank a gravitation potion and flew up above the base where an island was. I killed a few of wyverns, or dragons, uh, whatever you want to call them, since they dropped the souls of flight to upgrade my wings. I also began replacing the house yet again, with some plate blocks this time. 
On day 55, I was deciding whether to keep the house as Pearl Stone or Skyware. I went with Skyware. I thought the blue and the yellow looked way better than just plain old white. The only problem was I didn't really like the Skyware background, so instead I mined Meteor to make Meteor Brick Stone thingy background. I spent the rest of day 55 working on the base. On day 56, while I was working on the base, there was a party. So I rushed to the party girl and got some cake. I would love for the base to have an open background type situation, but I'm not sure if that would help completely negate the sandstorm, so I just placed windows in case. When the party ended, I was still working on the house, and looked way better than before, but it could still use some work. Of course, I didn't need to finish now, I have many more days left. So I'll worry about the fancy schmancies later. At the end of the day, I finished placing all the background. The house looks so much better in my opinion. Afterwards, I did some desert flattening. On day 57, there was a sandstorm. It turns out I did need the window background after all. Or else, I would be slowed down drastically. Drastically? Drastically. 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 I would be slowed down drastically. <laughs> That's not how you say. While I was flattening the background, there were some sand sharks. Also, a unicorn dropped a unicorn kite, I think. I didn't really see what dropped it, but it would only make sense. Using all the fairy powder, I upgraded my wings to fairy wings. After placing all the golden chests I had, it was time to organize. See you all in like 10 days because I own way too much trash. But before I did any actual organizing, because I didn't really want to, I swapped the chests from gold to shadow. I just thought it looked way better. I also made a room for the party girl to move into and got both the desert and hollow pylon from her. And on day 58, after procrastinating, I got to organizing. At the end of day 58, the sky hollow, I'm not sure what to call it. The blue base? The hollow base? The sky base? It's not really a sky base, it's not in the sky. The new base was completely clean, but I still had to organize my other chest from the destroyed castle. The fallen kingdom if you will. At day 59, at the old castle, I decided to only bring the important stuff, like potions and the materials needed to make said potions. The rest of the stuff can stay till I need it. Thanks to the pylon, it's only one click away. After a bit more organizing, I decided I would be fine for now. So I head to the jungle to kill a queen bee, since I hadn't actually done it before, and I needed the witch doctor to move in. Also, I always thought the witch doctor was a woman for some reason. I don't know why, I just kinda assumed. So I'm sorry for calling her that. Oh my god. So I'm sorry for calling him that, the, my last video. I couldn't actually find any new beehives, so I was going to make an abomination. Until... I felt like I was gonna have a horrible night. A mechanical boss was going to appear. Which was about time, because I'm a bit more prepared. Except I didn't really have an arena ready. But I do have a nice flat area, which will help. And then something really interesting happened. I didn't exactly remember which boss was meant to appear, but of course it was the twins that showed up. I, in my inventory I had a gravitation potion, so I drank it, and proceeded to have a really weird gravity fight. It was really fun. Unfortunately, I died. My potion had ran out and I didn't really realize. I'm confident I would have won that battle had it not been for my ignorance. So I got to getting materials ready to retry the fight. And on day 60, I got the materials needed for the twins. And then I had to build the arena. Also, the merchant arrived but didn't have anything good. I collected everything I needed for the abomination and then just killed the queen bee easily. And, once the witch doctor moved in, I bought an imbuing station and created flame acres. Icars? Icars. Icars. Which conveniently worked really well with my knife, which also counts as melee. Even though it's clearly not, but I I'm not complaining. I made a quick arena, just to place campfires, heart lanterns, and honey. So I could have the extra bonus regen abilities. And at night, I drank another gravitation potion and woo! There I go! Up into the sky! See ya! It was time for round two.
Afterwards, I won with ease. And I got the loot. And on day 61, I began work on the new arena. This time, I would make it match the base. And since the design worked, why change it? I recreated the arena from the last world. It was back, but with a reskin. I worked for the arena the rest of the day, but I did finish it at night. It's good to have an arena back, but it is surprisingly different. Afterwards, I drank a bunch of teleportation potions, but I ended up nowhere good. I thought the day was over, but then I accidentally summoned the Blood Moon. It lasted for like one minute. I did get the Money Trout though. On day 62, I bought some dynamite and got to the underground crystal kingdom, not, not kingdom, just the caves, to farm some souls of light. I created a mess hole that worked really well and I also got some queen slime spawns. And what better place to fight her than in this mess? I died. It was, it was not a good place. While farming, an enemy dropped the beam sword and a mimic dropped dual hooks, which was a good thing because my old hook was really bad. And if I'm being honest, I had completely forgotten I had that thing. Once I got enough souls, I head back home and fought a Mimic. Right away, I got the Storm Bowl to make arrows rain from the sky. It's really good against the mechanical bosses. I was also really lucky that it was on my first try. At the night of day 62, I rushed to get more souls of night and quickly ran home and made a mechanical worm summon. I bought a nice staff from the wizard and built a quick arena in the sky since I didn't have much time. But I did defeat the mechanical worm in one of the most intense battles I've had yet making my final battle against King Slime seem like child's play. Which, now that I say it out loud, doesn't really sound like that was impressive either. On day 63, I crafted Excalibur and a disc. But I put the disc away because I didn't really need it right now. I only had one and my throwing knives were much faster. I head to what will later become the underground arena and began placing crimson seeds so I could also get Icor. I also got some purple corruption Ebo stone blocks to spread in the new arena just so I could get souls of darkness as well. Just so I could get souls of darkness as well as light souls and cursed flames as well as piss. Then I just did some mining, preparing the arena and farming. A lot of mobs spawn in such a big open space. And I was only getting Souls of Light, which makes sense because it mostly depends on the biome you're in. And for now, it was mostly hollow. By the end of day 63, I had quite a bit of loot, as well as more than 40 Souls of Light. My cave farming didn't end on day 63. I continued expanding and placing the arena on day 64. While placing platforms, a mimic attacked me, and it dropped a flying knife. Now I have two knives. Then I fought Queen Slime. I'm not really sure how her pattern changed in Expert from normal mode since when I fought her in normal mode, she didn't really last that long, but she was a bit of a challenge. And after defeating her, she dropped Party Girl Bath Water, a flying slime mount, and an accessory that drops gelatin to damage enemies. I had basically become the new queen slime. What? The skeleton merchant arrived too. I bought a lantern from it, which doesn't really give off light, but it is very cute. And then a mimic attacked me, and I successfully defeated it. And then another one sneak attacked me and killed me. On day 65, after a bit more farming in the underground arena, I head home to do some organizing, farming, selling, and then I made more cursed flame flasks. I head to the underground corrupt jungle to get some souls of night as well. After getting 15 souls of night, I immediately ran back home so I could make a very important item. I made the piss book to lower enemy defense. And now I have the power of fire and pee on my side, basically unstoppable. I also made some powder to help spread the many types of corruption in my arena. On day 66, I was looking through my blocks and I was confused on why I had so little Skyward blocks. And then I moved a bit and saw my arena, which explains a lot. While collecting fishing materials, I realized the pirate NPC wasn't in the ocean, so I placed him there. Back at the base, I expanded the arena and got the first banner I would place. At night, I summoned the Blood Moon and got to fishing. I was looking to kill some Blood Moon bosses, and so I did pretty quickly. The first fight was a bit anticlimactic.
But when I finish the Dreadnoughtilus, Dreadnoughtilus, I ran to the arena and shot piss and flame at it. eventually defeating it and I got an achievement from it for the first time which means there's only one achievement left for me to have a perfect game meaning I got every achievement in Terraria. I had gotten most of them before including the fishing ones which is the reason I hate the angler and refuse to do any quests. I also got some cool light bats from the dreadnought to why did I try saying it again. On day 67 there was a party not quite the exact date but close enough. So I did some party decorating in the house. At night, I simply expanded the base. I don't need more room, but a bigger base does look cooler. I needed to be careful not to destroy the pond, since it had sand at its base. I also really wanted to add lights to the area. On day 68, I was still working on the basement, not really sure what to call it. I think it's a basement. I worked on the basement till nighttime, where I went to the guide to see what I needed to upgrade my running lightning boots. It turns out I needed ice skates, so I made some spelunker potions and went to the snow biome. After only mining for a bit, I found the ice skates in the first chest I ran into. And right before day 69, it began to rain slime. After defeating the goblin army, I turned on the balloon background machine. And needless to say, the background had a lot going on. It was now time to find the lava charm and the water walking boots. I found the llama charm right away. It was in a chest. I did not see it before. It was now time to find the water walking boots. At night there was a blood moon, but I wasn't too worried about it. I head to the ocean to try and find crates. While fishing, I accidentally summoned a blood eel. I was going to fight it sometime, so I might as well do it now. And sure, while fishing a few giant evil blood creatures tried killing me, but what's new? Life ain't easy for a fisher. Fortunately, nothing of value was lost in the boss attacks. On day 70, I fished still. I also fished quite a few crates, and I would open them as I got them, but then I decided I would get as many as I could, and then open them all. After fishing for a bit, I left to go make some crate potions. But after looking around everywhere, I didn't have an extractinator. The machine needed for me to get amber, so I went looking for one. And now we went full circle because I was back in the caves. I took this opportunity to start a elevator in my new base. After mining to the same level as my underground arena, I just head home and decided to fish without the crate potion. And after running out of bait, it was time to open all the crates I had fished. I probably should have done it way slower than I did though, but at least I did get some bait. On day 72, I was still fishing and the bait lasted forever and I got a lot of crates. After all my bait ran out, I opened all the crates and now I had more bait. Well, you know what they say about fishers. After organizing everything I got from fishing, I head to the underground desert to try and find an extractinator. Because fishing for crates was taking way too long. I found some sand boots and had the ability to move really fast on sand, but it wasn't what I was looking for. I also found another heart statue, which is good because now I can have two pockets of hearts instead of just wasting one. On day 73, a solar eclipse began, but I was busy mining and looking for the extractinator. But luckily, I found one and another heart statue. Now, I head home to farm the solar eclipse. I farmed the eclipse until nighttime and actually got the mechanical skeleton summon. I was gonna use it when nighttime came, but I got the warning of another mechanical boss, so I didn't have to waste my summon. The fight was close, a bit too close, but thanks to the Piss Book, the Storm Bow, and the Shield of Cthulhu, I managed to defeat it. Easily. With the Extractinator, I got to Extractinating. And on day 74, I got to making crate potions. Now it was time to fish. Again. 
Fortunately, I fished a magic conch, so I could just teleport to the ocean. I don't know why, but I felt like building a bigger ocean house. Maybe the area felt a bit too small. So I built up something really quick. It's not amazing, but I only had so much palm wood. I continued fishing till day 77. And every time I got the crate I needed, I would just get a dumb breathing pole. But I did collect a bunch of crates. And at some point, I just began placing them on top of the beach house. Thus beginning my crate collection. Also, there was a solar eclipse, but it wasn't my problem. I did get the moonstone though, and I didn't really need to farm for it. Which works out really well. After fishing for an hour, starting a crate collection, and fixing the beach house, I decided I had done enough fishing for now, so my boots can wait. After organizing, I head to the jungle. It was time to get my health up, and then fight Plantera. And this time, I didn't forget to mine Chlorophyte. I equipped an Ancient Chisel, which increased my mining speed by 25%, and then drank a mining potion, which increased it by another 25%. I spent all of day 78 making an arena and collecting life fruit because I was having a lot of fun mining. After killing some mobs, I head back to the base and saw I had a few items I needed for the ank shield to have immunity to basically every status effect. So I planned on getting everything for that sometime. But by the end of day 78, I was still doing some mob killing to get banners so they wouldn't be so annoying to deal with once I was in a fight with Plantera. And on day 79, I used all my life fruit and summoned Plantera, except the spawner wasn't near the arena. And I moved a bit too fast, so Plantera despawned. Note taken. I got to mining out areas for Plantera bulbs and light fruit to appear on. While mining, I did get a chain guillotine, which is somewhat similar to my knives, except without the flames, less range, and less speed, but more damage. As I let the jungle grass grow on the mud I had just mined, I got back to working on my base. I did a lot of progress in the basement area and couldn't make up my mind on keeping or placing the background, but I did notice sandstorms had drastically stopped, so I removed it. On day 80, I was placing backgrounds in the basement to see what would work. I also ran out of meteor background, so I went to mine more. And what would you know, there was another meteor in the same area. I don't get why they keep landing here, but it's fine. After mining out the whole meteor, I got a meteor head banner, and I don't think I've ever gotten one of those before. Afterwards, I got back to background designing. Uh oh. After designing some backgrounds that I might change later, I made the middle area of the base look nicer by adding some spiraling stairs. I also removed the glass in most areas, except for when the NPCs live, since it wouldn't be considered a livable home. I'm not sure if the sandstorms completely stopped, but I haven't dealt with any in a while. If they do return, I'll place the background back. It just looks way better without it. Uh oh. On day 81, I was experimenting on the base, but I wasn't too happy with many results. I could always return to the base in the next 100 days, because I am nowhere near done with my plants. I removed the rest of the glass where I could, and because there were a bit too many straight lines through the base, I removed some backgrounds. Afterwards, I did some land flattening. While trying to teleport, I didn't know why the pylon wasn't working. I replaced the background and did some changes, but it turned out it was just a cave pylon. It turned out corruption had overtaken the area, so I bought a clentaminator to clean up. The steampunker was in the ocean house, and I didn't realize it, but that's where most NPCs were. I should probably do something about that. Also, I had totally forgotten about my crate collection. Cleaning with a contaminator is always satisfying, especially in the mini-map where it just lights up the area. I've actually used this to reveal 100% of my mini-map before. It's really satisfying.
On day 82, I got the underground houses into a more livable condition. It was a bit dumb that I built my arena so close, but it will be fine. I'll clean it when I need to. There was also a sandstorm, which means I did need the glass background after all, which is lame. But I didn't place it back. I'll just ignore it for now. I also fought Plantera since I was cleaning the corruption by the jungle and saw a bulb right there. I got to the second phase, but I got stuck and died. Clearly, it was time for some upgrades. Back home, I switched back to my throwing knives and got some discs to see if they could help. I was tired of walking to the jungle arena, so I made a new path there. I also mined chlorophyte and looked for a bit more life fruit. And once I started mining, I couldn't stop. Going fast was just so addicting. I mined all the way till day 83. And I still spent a part of day 83 mining. And after mining 650 chlorophyte ore and finding 16 life fruit, I head back home to upgrade my gear and my health. After farming turtles for their shells, I successfully made a full set of turtle armor. During the blood moon, I worked on expanding my storage and made an actual potion slash plant room area. I also made a true Excalibur since I clearly needed weapon upgrades. And then I made some potions for buffs. At night, I defeated the destroyer and got one of the dev sets in the treasure bags, so free wing upgrade. I really liked how the new wings looked. Afterwards, using Souls of Might, Sight, and Fright, I made an Avenger Emblem, which increases all the damage I do by 12%. I then made the Mechanical Glove, and for the next item I needed, I head to Hell. On day 84, I arrived to a very lava flooded Hell. Who could have possibly done this? I didn't really get what I was looking for, but it was fine because I did get the Tax Collector anyways. On day 85, I got to crafting the Terra Blade before going to fight Plantera. And finally, I fought Plantera once more. The battle was intense, considering I had a debuff that lowered my defense by half, which was not a good thing at all. But I did manage to defeat it, and now I had access to the temple. On day 86, after heading back to the base to collect some potions, and the grand design to remove wires, I returned to enter the temple. Be sure to always bring a grand design, since you can just click and disable so many traps. As I made my way into the temple, I did a lot of looting of chests and wires. And when I arrived to the end of the temple, I was trying to open a chest next to the spawner, and I accidentally summoned the golem. It was a really close call, but I did manage to defeat it. From the treasure bag, I got the pixel, a heat ray and a shiny stone. An expert only accessory that greatly boosts my HP regen when I'm not moving. And then I mined the altar because you guys told me I could. I'm not sure if you being able to mine it is a new thing or if I just never tried but it's really convenient to know. On day 87 I got to farming the golem to get the sunstone but I did want to summon the solar eclipse without too many problems until I accidentally summoned the golem again. At least now farming would be a lot more interesting, and luckily I had arrows prepared and won the fight. And after defeating a Mothron, I got the Broken Hero Sword and crafted a legendary Terra Blade. And once the Solar Eclipse ended, I did some more golden farming with my new sword and my new minions. I also upgraded my armor to beetle armor and got back to farming golems. My golem farming continued into day 88. After killing around 15 golems, I broke into the lizard temple and tried getting more golem power cell summon thingies and after farming for most of the day, I only got 3. But fortunately, on my first try, not counting the other 15 tries, I got the sunstone and then I made the celestial stone. On day 89, I head to the desert, the most annoying biome ever, to mine fossils to get more amber for crate potions. It was time to do more fishing to try and get the water walking boots. But I didn't have any water leaves, so I guess no potion. But I did still have one of, if not the best fishing rod in the game, so I'll be fine. I continued fishing and thus began to expand my crate collection. 
And since I was in the area and the first 100 days are almost over, I worked on the beach houses. Uh oh. Okay, I can't make the joke anymore. It's Before the end of the day, I got back to fishing. On day 90, I was still fishing and oh man, I only have 10 days. I don't know why, but my tax collector just kept spawning in the middle of the ocean just to keep dying. After fishing, I head back home. I only had a few days, so it was time to start making my base look better. And so, I worked on the base until day 91. It looked way better, but it still had some empty rooms. I'm sure I'll find some use for them in the future. On day 91, I head to the dungeon Temple Purple to open any biome chest I could find. The lunatic weirdos were there, but of course I wasn't here for them just yet. And I mined my way through the temple. While exploring, I got a lot of powerful items like the Paladin Samur and the Black Belt. And if I got everything I needed, I could get an upgrade to the Shield of Cthulhu. And also got some ectoplasm. At some point, I was just having fun mining around like an idiot. I went and upgraded my pixel to a light modifier to add speed to it, as well as the well fed status, which made me go very, very fast. I actually kept mining all the way till day 92. I have a bit of an addiction. I head back to the jungle to work on the bases there. The 100 days were almost over and I wanted to focus on finishing some things I wanted to do. I let some water into the cave area mountain homes and removed some dirt background. I built a new house and it's basically what I had planned to do for this area but never actually got around to doing it. While placing jungle wall, I saw I had a jungle key in my inventory though I'm not sure when I got it. I needed to go back to the dungeon anyways to get the master ninja gear. I also decorated around the pylon and was done by day 93, kinda, for now. On day 93, I bought some fountains, removed some background, and then head back home to organize. At home, I learned that fountains actually change the color of nearby water pools. It was really cool, and I was actually getting tired of seeing purplish pink water. I couldn't decide between jungle or oasis, but I did end up going with jungle because it fit the whole hollow aesthetic. I do really like how out of place the water looks. I head back to the jungle to see if there were any jungle chests and while I was there I got the tabby. And back at the base with the tabby, the black belt and climbing gear I made the master ninja gear. Which allows me to dash like the shield of Cthulhu and have a chance to dodge attacks. I much prefer the ninja gear since I use the shield for movement most of the time, not really for the damage it does. I also accidentally used the sundial, which wasn't too bad since the day was almost over but it did scare me. I knew it would happen eventually, it just looked cool for decoration. For the next accessory I needed, I head to the corruption to mine out the area to farm enemies in. I needed vitamins, preferably gummies. I needed the vitamins to make an armor bracing accessory. And so, after cleaning out some area and mining a meteor since meteor heads were spawning and being annoying, I placed a blue candle and drank a battle potion to increase enemy spawn rate. But while farming, a werewolf arrived and I realized it was a full moon. I head back above ground to try and get the moon charm and I actually did manage to find it. And at home, I made the celestial shell. On day 95, I got to decorating the base and buying stuff from NPCs to add as decoration. And then I got to clearing land. I tried placing torches under the sand and I'm surprised it actually worked. On day 96, I head to the desert to get Anlion mandibles. While I was there, I made a friend. He was doing the spooky dance. While I was collecting mandibles, I got water leaves, which I also needed, so it works out very well. And after making potions, I got to create fishing. I kept fishing till day 97. And when my potions finally ran out and my crate collection had expanded, I didn't head home just yet. Since I didn't just want to build and fish till day 100, I made gravitation potions and got to alien hunting. Once I found the probe, I head home to deal with the alien invasion. I forget how annoying the Martians are to deal with. 
They're surprisingly strong for being so small. And to deal with the Martian saucers, I made a very quick makeshift room. But it turns out, dealing with them on the arena worked way better. It also helps if you have some form of knockback immunity because the other Martians get in the way a lot. And after defeating the second Martian saucer, I got the UFO mount. And I dealt with the Martians till day 98, where it ended pretty quickly. I was expecting a lot more. After all that, the cyborg moved in. And then I realized I still needed some NPCs. So I grabbed some mushrooms and mud and got to building. I wanted to build something nice for the mushroom dude, since I don't usually do that. I absolutely hate the way the mushrooms block look. But it does fit the whole mushroom theme, so I'll, I'll leave it. Now that I think about it, the guy's made out of mushrooms. And yet he lives in a mushroom house. Is it a flesh house or is he made out of house? Needless to say, I'm not a big fan of this NPC. I'm not sure if I have a favor actually. Maybe the angler. I also made a small island, just for the aesthetic. And finally, I placed ice candles that give off that blue light. The same blue light that the mushroom candles and lanterns give off. Then I just had to help for the rest of the day. And I actually managed to get the vitamins I needed. That's another accessory crossed off the list. And on day 99, I summoned the solar eclipse because I thought it would be fun. And from Amothra, I got both the Eye of Cthulhu and the Broken Hero Sword. Of course, I'd put the Broken Hero Sword into good use. So, after farming the solar eclipse all day, I made the Terra Toilet. And at night, I summoned the Blood Moon. And while killing mobs, I accidentally summoned the Empress of Light. It seems like I've been very careless with my boss summoning recently. Well, I did pretty well considering I wasn't expecting to fight her. And I already knew kind of what to expect since I already fought her daylight form in a different video. But she still managed to outspeed me. Probably all that knockback. I'll equip the cobalt shield next time I fight her. Preferably the ang shield. And it wasn't expected, but it did make day 99 a lot more interesting. And finally, day 100. There is no King Slime fight for Day 100 this time, but there is another event that I have been wanting to try out. So I began placing torches and started the... Whatever it's called, I don't, I don't know the name. The Torch God. <laughs> it's a small challenge that occurs whenever you place 100 torches, and you receive the Torch God's favor, which allows you to place biome-specific torches from regular torches. It was very underwhelming. So I decided to do something else. I spent all of day 100 gathering potions, getting equipment, building an arena in the sky, and making a room for the nurse, as well as getting some summons. Then I got to fighting the twins, the destroyer, and skeleton prime.
And then I die to fall damage. And if that isn't the most fitting way to win the first 100 days, I don't know what is. I was shocked when I died. Well, that was it. 100 days. There's still much to do. And I swear I will fight those bosses together again. As well as the Empress. But I've reached the end of the 100 days for now. So if you reached the end of the video, I'd appreciate if you could leave a like. Thanks for watching.